Contaminated land in Queensland. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd look at this article that someone shared on a previous video about contaminated land here in Queensland. And it's PFSA is the issue and that is poly fluoroalkaline. It's used in firefighting equipment. Before we jump through this article, let's just have a look at this substance. Now I'm familiar with it because I encountered it when we worked on an extension at Brisbane Airport for the fire station. And the issue was, you know, they'd be practicing and training and spraying this well, fire retardant chemical and foam, and it was pretty toxic. So PFS, PFAS stands for pre and poly fluoroalkaline substances and are manufactured chemicals used in production in products that resist heat, oil, stains and water. The chemicals have been used in Australia and around the world in many common household products and specialty applications. As a result, most people living in developed nations have some PFAS in their bodies. Legacy firefighting foam containing uh, perfluorooctane sulfonate and uh, perfluorooctane acid as active ingredients were once used extensively worldwide and within Australia, including at Defence Force bases. This is from the Department of Defence. Due to their effectiveness in fighting liquid fuel fires, perfluorohexane sulfonate is also commonly found in the legacy firefighting foam as an impurity in the manufacturing process. So PFOS, PFAO, and PFHXS belong to the PFAS group of chemicals. In 2004, Defense commenced phasing out its use of legacy firefighting foam containing PFOS and PFOA as active ingredients and transitioned to a more environmentally safe product. The release of PFAS, PFAS into the environment has become a concern because we've learned these chemicals can persist in humans and animals and in the environment. And here are the different, you know, even non-stop cook cookware as well. So let's jump back and have a look at this article. This seems to be just another issue and there are certain, certainly in Sydney with regards to just the contamination of the land there. I'm not sure if it's similar things, but just Contaminated land is an issue that you need to deal with on a lot of construction sites, particularly industrial land that they're improving for these multi-million dollar apartments. So American activist Erin Brockovich has warned all levels of government in Australia to act swiftly to prevent the spread of PFAS chemical containment, or sorry, contamination with more affected sites coming to light. The ABC News has obtained a list of more than 60 locations identified by authorities in one state alone believed to be contaminated by the synthetic compounds. They include a prime parcel of Riverfront real estate in Brisbane, slated for a high-end residential development, and a university campus currently under construction to the north of the city. PFAS chemicals are found in firefighting foam and other products manufactured for their resistance to heat, water, and oil. Authorities overseas, such as the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, have found PFOA and PFOS chemicals, a type of PFAS, can cause reproductive and developmental liver and kidney and immunological effects in laboratory animals. Queensland authorities said PFAS can persist for a long time in the environment and tend to accumulate in the bodies of animals and people. The study is currently underway, sorry, a study is currently underway by the Australian National University looking at the health impacts on people who have come in contact with high levels of the chemical. But understandably, the concern is that it can build up in your body over time. Ms. Brockovic said the details from Queensland alone were alarming. I'm coming over here having dealt with this in every state in America, she said. The site the sites that you're looking at here in Queensland. These didn't just happen this morning. This has been going on for a very long period of time. We're starting to see more and more where the government tends to well, not tell us about things. That's all on the cover of all of the newspapers today, just the state restricting access to the media for all this legislation to keep us safe, keep us safe. 
That's the risk, guys. This is the slippery slope. Okay, it is not always a logical fallacy. Sometimes it's true and we're seeing it happen. Imagine your whole country and how many sites you have in other territories. You could be looking at hundreds and hundreds of locations and what is in fact happening to your water supply and to your people. You really need to wake up to these issues in this country, here in Australia. You're bigger and better than this. No, I don't, don't, I don't think uh, she knows Australia too well. You know, the Socialist Republic of Australia. We're not a republic yet. One day. One day, comrades. They'll get there. <laughs> That's a joke too, by the way, everyone. New developments among PFA sites. A list of locations includes 26 fire stations, 8 current or former defence sites, 6 airports, 4 ports, 3 town water supplies, and several waste facilities. It took more than a year for ABC News to access the documents from Queensland's Department of Environment under right to information. See, this is the problem. This is the problem. You know, one of a viewer's pub test tried to get information, uh, an information request from New, New South Wales government to do with the fire cladding there, and it was just back and forth, and in the end, a bureaucrat turned him down. And we've, we've, I've looked at that in a previous video. Some locations on the list have been well publicised like the contamination of a Bundaberg Reservoir last year and the accidental release of 22,000 litres of toxic firefighter foam at the Brisbane airport in 2017. But several others appear to have little or no media coverage, including the former Balimba Barracks, which is earmarked to become one of Brisbane's newest residential precincts. Well, yes, we've seen it, haven't we? We have seen it. Wait a minute. Is this like an old article? No, updated 51 minutes ago. <laughs> you bugger. The Department of Defense is in the process of selling the site to a developer but began an investigation into the extent of the contamination last year. A defense spokeswoman said the developer would take responsibility to remediate the land once the settlement is finished. Yes, sounds good. Look at what happened at Sugarcube. Still can't occupy it. And I'll link to that video here, so you can have a look. Just writing it down. So in August 2019, Shea, Shea Group was selected as the preferred purchaser of the site following a competitive open market sales process, she said. They're an experienced Australian developer that has demonstrated its capacity to successfully remediate, develop and protect the heritage values of the site. The contract of sale for the site as provisions to ensure that Shea Group will commence work to remediate the development of the site in a timely manner. Also on the list is a former paper mill at Petrie in the north of Brisbane, which is being converted into a new campus for the University of the Sunshine Coast. Documents show the Department of Environment issued a notice to the operator, ORA, after PFAS chemicals were detected in soil and leaking into an adjacent Pine River in 2017. Final report, sorry, a final response commissioned by the company itself in response to the department found there is an unacceptable risk to birds and animals in the surrounding waterways populated with recreational fisheries. It also found that some parts of the land would be suitable for residential development or open public space. In the report, the company said it was in the process of conducting remediation work and a DE S. Spokesman said it found no unacceptable risk for people. A final investigation report, including a human health and ecological risk assessment, indicated that there was no unacceptable health risk for people on the site or nearby as a result of the PFAS, he said. Following the investigation, Oren has set up a PFAS treatment facility on site, which is licensed by DES as part of remediation activity associated with the current site development. So shame on you, she smacks local councillor. So the Sunshine Coast Regional Council recently came under fire after announcing plans to release millions of litres of PFAS tainted water from the airport straight into the ocean off the coast. Councillor Jason O'Prey released a video online putting some of the water into his mouth saying it was clean. There's no foaming, there's no discoloration. It's certainly not, not toxic, he said in the video. Ms. Sprokovich viewed the video and said the councillor should be ashamed. You look really stupid because you're taking water that's tainted. 
that you've tried to clean up and throw it in your mouth and say, oh see, it's pretty perfectly safe, she said. There's no comparison to that and swimming in it every day over a course of time. So folly it is, shame on you. We're literally going to crap in our own mess, mess kit if we keep dumping and dumping into our water and rivers. I said years ago we need to get ahead of this and then not. Miss Brockovic has flown to Australia, was flown to Australia by Shine lawyers for a speaking tour on PFAS contamination and other industrial relations issues such as silicosis. Oh yes, silicosis is that's a whole other whole other issue that uh, I've discussed about before, and it's it's quite concerning. It's, it's actually quite depressing. Guys my age with kids dying just because they were working on their job, although and now they weren't wet cutting. So it's yeah. The legal firm has already filed class actions against the Department of Defence on behalf of residents in Oakey, in Queensland's Darling Down, and Catherine in the Northern Territory who are claiming to have been impacted by PFAS contamination in their communities. Special Consul for Shine Lawyers, Joshua Aylward, said the legal firm was also investigating other sites around the country. I'm a bit shocked because we know about the defence bases which have used a lot of this foam that have contaminated the sites around them. There have been a few other sites that have leaked out over time, but personally I didn't realize there were 60 or so sites just in Queensland. The contamination has spread quite widely off many of these defense bases, and I would say the list of 60 that you have here in Queensland, there will be some of those sites where the contamination has well and truly left the airport or the ports. So a department tracking a number of sites. A spokesman for the Department of Environment and Sciences said potential PFAS contamination is monitored by a number of government agencies. When the PFAS amounts are small and under the national guidelines, they are not considered to be a risk, he said. In instances where guidelines are exceeded, the public is advised. Any required human health precautions are led by the Queensland Department of Health and investigations to determine the cause of the contamination undertaken. DES is currently tracking a number of sites in Queensland where the potential for PFAS at higher levels may exist. The list provided to the ABC includes sites where PFAS has been identified but does not necessarily mean PFAS guidelines have been exceeded. So would that mean if you were doing a uh, conveyancing search would it come up on the contaminated land register would would this affect a purchasing decision you would make let me know in the comments guys the Queensland government was the first government in Australia to ban the future use of firefighting foam containing PFOS and PFA PFOA in July 2016 and has implemented a policy to phase out stocks of firefighting foam containing these chemicals so here you go, we've got water supply, airport, 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 fire stations, fire stations, port, defense, 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 fuel refinery, barracks, residence, waste recycling, Krogan, there you go, Swan Petrie, emergency services, road, unclear, unclear, fuel storage mine, hazardous waste services, and industrial facility. So these are a whole lot of locations I think would be worth adding to the construction map and I'll I'll do that next few days so guys I thought this was a valuable one to make everyone aware of because it is another issue that is going to rear its head we've got the apartments cracking <laughs> we've got contaminated land we've got the fire cladding we've got you know structural issues we've got everything here in Australia guys anyway like share and subscribe Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you'd like to help me produce more of this type of content and just get videos out there, please, I have a Patreon, a Subscribestar. Every little bit helps. Take care, everyone. I'll talk to you later.